welcome to the SCI chat room. On today's episode, we will be talking about the creative force of faith. The Christian walk is a walk of faith, so I believe this topic is very important. This message is by our senior pastor, Adama Segbeji. You can watch the full message on our Facebook page, Solution Chapel International, or on our YouTube channel, Solution Chapel International. My name is Margaret, and joining me for today's discussion are Ella, Shingi, and Pastor Halima. Welcome to the chat room, Pastor Halima. Oh, thank you. Once again, thank you. It's a privilege and a great opportunity. Thank you. Good. And hello, Sister Shingi. Hello, Ella. Hello. Nice to, nice to have you with me on here. Welcome to the chat room, Shingi. It's good to see you. Hi, nice to see you as well, Margaret. It's good to be with you guys again. I always look forward to seeing you guys. <laughs> awesome. Welcome to the chat room, Ella. It's good to have hello. you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Amazing. The creative force of faith works by believing in your heart and confessing what you believe with your mouth. In our senior pastor's presentation, he said that everything you call for today, you will see and have it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that there is a season of waiting. When you call it for today, you will see and have it tomorrow. He used his personal testimony that four years ago, he declared that we were going to have five services and we can see that manifest today. For him, the season of waiting was four years. Four years is a long time for someone to give up. We come to church, we hear such powerful messages. We declare, we decree things, and down the line, we don't see them and we tend to be discouraged. I guess my question is, we all know that there is a season of waiting. So what should our attitude be in the time of waiting? And what are some of the practical tools that, are, that can help us wait well? I will start off with Shingi. Um, I like what Pastor said when he was preaching the message, the creative force of faith, that if you can't see it, if you don't believe it in your heart, it will not manifest. So I think having that attitude of expectation, he talked about the creative force of words that we have to speak things into being, that if we don't speak it, if we don't speak the word of God, it won't come into being. Um, God used words and he was a creative force. He created the world with his words. So I think we need to remain focused on our goal. Life can be so challenging sometimes. And when things happen, especially if you're waiting for a very long time for a breakthrough, it's so easy to get distracted by everything else that's going on. And we lose hope. We lose our focus. We lose our determination. And we move away from the plan. And then sometimes that's how we don't receive the breakthroughs that we planned when we look at Peter in the Bible, when Jesus called him to walk on the water, as long as he remained focused on Jesus, he was fine. But as soon as he's focused on the storm, which I tend to think uh, represents the troubles of the world, he began to sink. So I think as it's so important for us to remain focused on the end goal, no matter how long it takes. I also think it's important that during that waiting process, we are not stagnant. So if we look at practical examples, for example, in life, if you're waiting for a job promotion and you've been praying for it, while you're doing that, what are you doing to receive? What are you doing in preparation for that? Are you looking at your new job role? Are you looking at the new skills that you have to have? So it's okay to wait and expect from God, but what are you doing to prepare and to receive that blessing and to be able to use it? So I think an attitude of expectation and preparation is important during the waiting season. Amazing. I like that an attitude, expectation and preparation. And I also like the fact that you said we should keep our eyes on Jesus, because if we take our eyes off, we are going to sing. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts, Ella? So, so when, we are, when we are talking about faith and praying and waiting, the attitude that I see that we should have during that period is now so we've, there's something that we desire of God, there's something that we need, there's something that we require of him. And we've prayed, we believe in our hearts and we've confessed with our lips and said that this is what we want of him and this is what we're expecting of him. Now, in that period, one of the attitudes I feel that is so important to have is a, an attitude of, of joy and, and, and of gladness and of positivity. You can't have an attitude of a downcast look and a sad look and, somebody's, and, and somebody who's actually in waiting. Nobody should know that you're actually waiting for something. You should have mm. an attitude that is... That is, that is bright and positive. 
and we don't want people asking what's going on and then you want to start mm -hmm. telling people oh, I'm, I'm still waiting I've been waiting for a year for this I, I still haven't heard anything or I've been waiting for five years for this I still haven't heard anything no one is supposed to know that even you are not supposed to realize when it suddenly comes upon you because you are busy with like sister Shingi said you are busy with so many things preparing for this thing that you are waiting upon God for in the meantime, if you just sit and fold your hands and you're thinking when this thing comes, then yes, I'm ready. But how do you know that you're ready when it comes? So you have to make steps. Like Sister Shingi said, if you're, if, you're getting, if you're waiting for a new job, you're preparing for a new job, even if it's a role that you don't have yet, what are the skills that you have now? Do you have, do, are there skills that you think you need to develop, that you, you need to get to develop yourself so that when that thing comes, when that job comes, it's the same with everything in life. If you're waiting for a job, if you're waiting for marriage, if you're waiting for whatever it is, you're waiting for kids, anything that you're waiting for, there has to be a period of preparation. And right. in that period of preparation, you don't even realize, as long as you're doing it with joy and gladness in your heart, you don't even realize when that thing comes upon you. And you won't even realize, even if it's five years of waiting, you wouldn't even realize that, oh, it's five years gone already. Mm -hmm. But we have to keep our eyes focused on God, like Sister Shingi said. When it came to Peter, keep your eyes focused on him. If you start to waver and look around and think, oh, this person has it. This person has what I'm, I've been waiting on God for. This person has what I've been praying for. Where is my own? Where is, why is my own not here? That's just bringing you down and just making you feel like God is not doing anything. The fact that you can't see it doesn't mean that God is not doing anything. No. So I'm going to during the period of waiting. It should be that of joy, that of gladness, that of positivity. Awesome, thank you. Even if we don't see it, he's working. Yeah. So if you have an attitude of joy, be excited about what he's about to do because we know that he's faithful. Yes. And as long as we, we are making faith with our works is dead, so as long as we are partnering with him, we know that he will bring this to pass. Amazing, thank you. What are your thoughts, Pastor? Wow. Uh, faith, um, to me, faith is, um, is an attitude that is not for everybody sometimes when i look at life faith is not for people who have if we may say like what pastor says a mediocre attitude faith is for people who like sister shingi said an attitude of expectation but faith is the beginning of everybody's life for people who have visions for people who have um, a need a want and some people are complacent. So faith is not for complacency. So you have to have a vision. You have to have an attitude of expectation, Sister Chingy said. You have to have a need and not a want, you know, a need because wants are things you can do for yourself. You know, they are easily for you to achieve, but a need and, and that need has to be that need that is you're incapable of you know, accomplishing for yourself. So faith is not, number one, faith is not for everyone because some people cannot orchestrate having faith. But in this chat, we're encouraging everybody and pulling everyone to make them understand that faith is the beginning of everything. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says without faith, we cannot please God. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can achieve is first of all, stepping stone, number one, first please God, and then you will achieve all your expectations, all your needs, and all these things. Now, second thing for me is, when our pastor was preaching, there's something important he said. With, for faith to manifest, first you have to believe, and then you have to store in your heart. Mm -hmm. Because then from your heart, you will be able to speak. So mm -hmm. you have a thought, you have a need, you have a desire. Uh, you have an expectation for all and all these things have to be the ones that you know in your capable self you cannot be able to do mm. so the the second thing I've, I've learned about faith is that faith is very humbling very humbling and very humbling because it, it is those things that you know you're educated you're rich it, it, faith is for everybody and not for everyone, it's for everybody who taps into faith. They could be rich, they could be poor, they could be uh, wealthy, they could be educated or non-educated. 
what they need is the core importance here. What, what they're, they're, they're looking to be manifested is the core importance. But the similarity of all mm. these people is that they cannot orchestrate it as a higher power needs to orchestrate this thing for them. So whether rich, the humbling part is you're rich, but you're very sick, mm. but your money cannot buy you health. Faith no. taps in. Mm. So you're, you're, you're poor uh, or you don't have, and you don't have, that's it, you don't have. And all you, 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 you're looking up to is Jehovah Jireh to provide for you in terms of food, in terms of shelter, in terms of everything. The similarity here is, and the humbling part is, there's nothing you can do. So you and the wealthy person, two of you have a need, and the two needs only a higher power can do. So that's the humbling part of faith, that it's not because of our talents, it's not because of what we have, it, we have to be humble. That's why God says, without faith, we can't please him because we are shredded to a place of nothing that we know to everything only that God can do. Now, that said and done, what pastor said about storing, then there's the waiting because this is what you're, 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 you're the wealthy person or you're the other person on the other spectrum and you're looking for God to, you know, to manifest in your life this need that you have, whether it's your healing, whether it's the provision. But first, you have to believe God can do it. Right. And then that belief gets stored in your heart. And once it's stored in your heart, because it's there, you, you're carrying this beauty in your heart. And as you walk about manifesting it becomes glorious because and, and and that's the waiting period where the story to me when i store the things i know god can do in my heart i'm able to speak to to speak them because out of the abundance of my heart my heart my mouth will be able to speak so when this message was preached for me it was the 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 faith waiting time is the humbling time that's the time God needs to humble you, to separate you from what you know to what he only can do. Mm -hmm. And he will prepare you, you know, along the way as you continue to speak, you're continuously being humbled day by day. And on the other hand, of course, faith comes by hearing and hearing. And, in, you know, in the humbling, you keep seeking God. You know, in the waiting time, you keep seeking God and praise God. Before you know it, God does not even say it's tomorrow or the other day, but it could be today. It could be in 10 days. It could be in one year. But the beauty is, the humbling part is, in my heart, I have confidence. My God will surely do it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. My God will surely do it. So in the waiting time, we need to keep seeking God. It's a humbling time as well. But I guess he humbles us in this season so we can seek him and know that he is the only one who can bring these things we are declaring to us. Thank you so much, ladies, for sharing your thoughts. I guess the summary of it all, from what Shingi said, as Alim and Sister Ella said, is all that, that although we have declared these things into being, there's a part for us to play. Faith without works is dead. So we should be doing something. We should be expecting, developing ourselves, be, be in joy, be excited and seek God, and in the midst of it all, he will bring it to pass. Awesome, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, Pastor said, use a scripture in Genesis chapter one, where God saw darkness in the beginning, the earth was void, um, formless, and darkness was all over the surface of the deep. And God said, let there be light. Um, he didn't struggle to say, let there be light. He said, let there be light. We have been created in the image of God. And so we have the DNA of God in us. So for us as believers, when we see darkness, we shouldn't struggle to say, let there be light. But unfortunately, not all believers are able to do this. So my question is, why are our words so important? And how can we come to the place where we can speak light in areas of darkness outside of the Ella? So we know um, the Bible tells us that um, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our words, there's, there's life and there's death, and we should choose which one we should go with. Now, there is no one in their sane mind who will want to choose death and say, oh, yes, I choose the words of death, and we're going to go with the words of death. But unknowingly, in our everyday lives, 
we always we, we tend to choose words of death and it's not necessarily saying oh you know so when i wake up this morning i'm going to die that's not what the death is the death is the negativity that you speak into your life the death is the 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 down down plane, the downcasting of things that you speak into your life. If when you don't uplift yourself or uplift others, it's speaking death. When you don't believe and speak positive things, it's speaking death. So this is it's so important that when we wake up in the morning or any situation we find ourselves, especially when you have prayed and you're waiting on God for a particular situation to manifest, you will start to notice things or things start to come into play that discourage you. Or start to tell you, you know, why, why are you waiting for this? I mean, at your age, how can this happen for you? At your age, why should this happen to you? You know, I mean, look at where your mates are. You know, things will start to come into your head. It's inevitable. When, especially when you, are, when you are afraid, you have declared, and you are now waiting. That waiting period is such a, a, a mm -hmm. difficult time. Crucial. Voices, situations, you see things around. Even you, you have your own mm -hmm. self-doubt as to, why should I really be asking, is this thing not too massive? Is this thing not too massive? But somebody told me recently, they said, look, when you, your faith is such that when you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, you should be surprised if the mountain doesn't move. Mm -hmm. That's where your surprise should come into that. Why, how, how dare you not move when I have spoken to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But the thing is, in all, this, in all these times, we need to keep declaring. Even when you have that doubt in your mind, shake it off immediately. Don't let it settle. Don't let it settle. This is why we have our voices. This is why we have our, our, the words. This is why we have the word of God in, in our lives that is made fresh, that is made alive in us every day. This is why we have the word. Go into that word. You don't have to look for 20 scriptures to quote. Look for once, even if it's a scripture that you're familiar with, look for one scripture. Stand upon it. Stand upon that scripture. Even when you're, you're, you're feeling so down and you can see with your naked eyes, with your own eyes, not with your spiritual eyes. Now, with your own eyes, you can see all the negativity. You can, you can see why this thing should not work. Mm. But then the word also tell you, tells you why it, why it is going to work because of the God that That's you serve. <laughs> Otherwise, he's, he's called God. He's not called, like somebody said, he's not called Mr. He's not called, <laughs> not called a, a, a governor. He's not called, he's not called doctor. He's called there's God. No one like he's, 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 there's a reason he's called God. Because there's no one else that can do the things that he has done. You can do it. Then go ahead and do it. And let us watch you do it. If you are the one who is, who is God and can say to, say, let, let, this, let this empty, empty void. There's nothing there. And you are able to create all the things that you wake up, you open your window and you look at and you can create it. Then be called God. But there's no other person that can be called God but him because of the things that he's able to do. Now, when the impossibilities start in your life, when you get to a place of impossibility, then that's where God takes over. Because obviously, if I can take off my, my phone, I lift my phone by myself. That's not a problem. That's not, that's not an issue for me. I don't need to call God to say, God, I need to lift my phone now. Can you come and help me so I can lift my phone? I need the energy to lift my phone. I don't need it because I can just lift off my phone. But there are some things that you know that with you, there's nothing that you can do, absolutely nothing you can do about it. It's physically not possible. It's scientifically not possible. It's biologically not possible. Nothing is possible. At that point, you know that the only way that this thing can shift is unless God comes into this situation. That's where we have to use our words. We can't just be quiet. Our faith, like, our, like, like Pastor Sa Adama Sebeji says all the time, your faith is a speaking faith. You need to speak it. You can't just be quiet about it and, and think that, oh, yes. Oh, yes, God knows our thoughts. But you can't just think that, oh, yeah, he knows my thoughts. You need to speak it. Speak it for the devil to hear. Speak it for anyone who cares to hear, to, to know that this is where your stand is. So it's like declaring yeah. your stand in any situation. So that's why our, our words are so important. We can't take them for granted. We can't just think that, like, like Pastor says, your faith is not just there just to, just to communicate. It's not just there to say, oh, Oh, yeah. So I say this. I stand upon that word that you have declared. No matter what goes on around you, even say to God, I'm having doubts right now, but I stand upon these words. You know, denying, denying, the, denying the things that, is, that are happening to you is not going to help you. Denying to say, oh, yeah, no, 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 I'm not in any sorrow right now. Oh, no, I'm not in any pain right now. No. Tell God that I am in pain right now, but your word says. Tell God I am in sorrow right now, but your word says. 
That's the only way that you can defeat it. You keep telling yourself, no, 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 I have no sorrow. But inside, you are, you are dying of the sorrow. Instead, speak it and voice it out. And let God know that this child of mine is, is standing on my word. Because my word, I, I, I said that I honor my word above my name. So you have to stand on that word and keep declaring that word to him. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ella. Stand on the word and keep declaring that word. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't um, deny what we are going through. Yeah. You should acknowledge it and know that before God, go pour your heart to him. Father, this is what I'm going through. But I know that you are greater than this thing I'm going through. And so you're going to bring me out. Amazing. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts, Pastor Halima? You know, the beauty of the word when Pastor was preaching about the creative force of faith was when he elaborated to us that God is an awesome God. He, 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 knew, he knew us before we were even born. And he has laid out our life. He already knows where your life is going to be and the things you're going to go through. And his love is amazing because the introduction of the God whom we serve, the God whom we look up to, he, he did not introduce himself as the God of the, you know, giving and doing and all that. I love that part where pastor said, God introduces himself to us as a creative God. That, that's the beginning. In the beginning, God created the word with his own word. How awesome. He, he introduces to us who we are. So that along the way, we do not, you know, we don't, we don't fall short. We don't get conflicted or mixed up. You know, he, this is well organized. This is awesome. Like uh, uh, Sister Ella said, God is God. There's none like him. There's, there, there's none now, nor ever, nor shall be. And there's no other name that can be compared to his. Hallelujah. He, he, this is who he is. He, 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 had, he, he always has a good plan for you and I and whoever else is listening to us today. He has a good plan. And this is shown by the, from the very beginning because he was there before the existence of this world that he created. He was there. Mm -hmm. But before creating us, he, he, he gave us a guidance that will be able to manifest in our lives easily if we follow. I love that when Pastor said the introduction of God in our lives, the God whom we, uh, you know, we, whose DNA we carry is the introduction of a creative God. The introduction of the same creative God who says he has created us in his own image and likeness. So who are we? We are creative. Sister Ella mentioned that, like Pastor said, God did not use words for communication. He used them to create. So our communication, our communication can also be out, out of creativity. You know, our creativity should be our communication. So that, that is very beautiful that, you know, God in the beginning shows us that what he has done, so can we. In fact, Jesus says, the works that I've done, greater works shall you do. Awesome, repeated again. Greater works shall, you know, by the same God in the Son. Greater works shall you do also. And the awesomeness of this is when, when we are waiting, I think we tend to forget. We, you know, you, you have faith as a Christian, as a believer. You know, there is God. You know, He has good plans for you. And there's, you know, your health is looking at you. And uh, there's, of course, the situation, let's say, you, you know, maybe you have a physical illness that is uh, bringing blemishes on your face. You know, something physical that you can see every day when you look at yourself, there's a change happening. And the change starts speaking to you. You know, it, it looks more bold. And it's the mountain that you're facing that's looking bolder than the words that need to come out of, you know, the abundance of your heart. But Remember again the storage. Mm. Let's let's not be let's not be wavered as Christians. Let's not be uh, let's let's not be shallow. Let let's let's be Christians who understand the word of God as He says it to us. Mm -hmm. Faith 
comes from hearing and hearing the word. And I'll repeat that again because I have grown with the awesomeness of understanding that the journey for me, when I began with God, there were times when I never knew how to pray. I did not know what to say. And I was facing big mountains. And I do know that God is awesome in that time because I, I reckon and I realized that in those days, God knew where I was in my journey. My faith was as little as a mustard seed. But the thing is, even with the little faith, I remember sitting down and saying, Lord, look at it. I don't even know what to do. I, I remember voicing those words in my lifetime, 10 years ago, going through big times, difficult things and saying, Lord, look at this situation. Where am I supposed to start? How am I supposed to start? But that was my faith. I spoke it. Right. I, 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 I involved God in it. Faith is about us. When we speak, we get it out from the storage of how we know to do things. The storage, which is our inner being, whether mind or, you know, or body. And we now bring them out and, and bring them to, to, by faith for God to work with our, to, to work with what we have seen. But because only when we speak it, does God take it, does God take over? When you're still carrying this thing and not saying anything, God is also waiting for us to say something. But when we speak it, God takes over. And now he says, okay, my daughter, my son now understands that there's nothing they can be able to do, but this mountain surely will shift because they have faith in my partaking in this situation and I'll surely shift this mountain for them. So uh, God is awesome. He has he has shown us from the very beginning that we are creative and we are creative by engaging him also in this creativity with our words thank you awesome thank you pastor when we speak the mountain can be shifted this Amazing. is the sei chat room and today we are talking about the creative force of faith share your thoughts comment and let's know what you think Shimi, what are your thoughts please just to add on to what the ladies have said as well, when you are in a situation of darkness, the world is constantly pouring uh, words into our minds. The world is constantly telling us you are not beautiful enough, you are not thin enough, you are not intelligent enough, you are not the right race. God created words, God uses words to create, but we also have to renew our minds to be able to accept the words that he says. So we have to choose whose report it is that we're going to listen to. And just to reiterate that words do have power. I mean, in the book of Proverbs, it says that a gentle tongue is like the tree of life, but perverse words break the spirit. So the words that we speak when we're in a difficult and dark situation, if you're already in a dark situation, as Ella has said, let God know but don't add or agree with what the world tells you about yourself. Agree with what the word of God, the word of God that created you and you have the same DNA so you can align and agree with him to be creative. I like when Jesus was dying on the cross. Jesus was a perfect example of showing God's DNA at work. No matter what he was facing, when they were arresting him in the Garden of Gethsemane, some of us, uh, his disciples chopped the ear off of one of the soldiers, mm -hmm. but he used creation and his words to heal him. Even when he was on the cross facing the most utmost humiliation for us, he was with the prisoner who asked him for forgiveness. Where Jesus should have been wallowing in darkness, he said, you will sit with me on my throne. He said to God, pray for them, for they do not know what they're doing. So it is so easy sometimes to be overwhelmed with the negativity and mm -hmm. what the world expects of us. But if we follow the example of God, renew our minds and believe we are who he tells us to be. We follow the example of Jesus who came to live a life so that we can follow him and he is an example for us. So it's just remembering the power that words have and the importance that gentle words heal, but harsh words break spirits. And it's just in everyday life as well, when we speak to our children, our children scream, they drive us mad. And we have to discipline them. But how do we discipline them? Do we discipline them with words that will heal 
that will grow, that will teach them, or we, do we discipline them with words that are harsh? We've all seen people in life where parents have talked to them in a certain way, or famous people who say, my parents were like this, like this, and it does affect. So it's just remembering the power of our words and that kind words heal, and kind words cannot also heal others, but also heal us in whatever situation we are in. Amazing, thank you. Words are powerful, kind words heal. So we should be kind in dealing with everyone. And when we see darkness, we do not have to agree with the darkness. We have, we, if we want to go to God, fair enough, but we don't have to agree with the darkness we see, but we have to speak life because we have the creative power, the creative DNA of our Father in us. Amazing. Thank you so much, ladies. I believe the last thing I want us to talk about is the scripture says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so our hearts are very important. The scripture says again that a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings out good. We live in a social media generation where the media specializes in highlighting the negatives. If it's not negative, it's not news. It goes out there and you don't, the interesting thing is you don't have to go and seek this negative news. It gets thrown at you. You go on Facebook, your newsfeed is all there. You're on WhatsApp groups, they are sharing it on every platform and you're wondering, wow, what's happening? And we know that our hearts are important. So my question is, how do we effectively guard and protect our hearts from the negative, our hearts and our minds from the negativities of life? I'll start with Shinge. Um, I think, as you said, it's so important to be careful what we allow ourselves to be exposed to. I think knowledge is good. I think uh, we mustn't be too religious and say we're not going to listen to the news, we're not going to. I think we have to be aware of what is going on around us, but we also have to be selective about what we choose to listen to. Because I feel whatever you feed yourself is like planting a seed. And if you don't look after your mind and guard your soul and guard your heart like the treasure that it is, it is just so easy for all these distractions to sway you and move you away from the focus that God has for you. Um, I like my music very much. I love to sing and dance. And um, before I gave my life to God, I used to listen to a lot of music and i still do but it's just about being selective and my children are always so laughing at me because i'll hear a certain song and i'm like oh i want and i have to remind myself they're rapping about women in a certain way they are teaching men how to they if my son is listening to this song what is his opinion going to be about women? It is hard. We live in the world. There's things out there. Let's not be too religious and pretend that we are so godly and so spiritual. There's things that out there that we don't like. But I think it's about acknowledging that there's some things that are not good for us. There are some things that don't help us, that don't grow, and it's about being selective about what you feed yourself. And it's also being mindful of our children. Our children have these gadgets. Are we, you know, do we have internet controls? Do we know who they are talking to? What are we exposing them to? So it's also about educating them about the word of God. And my children are very good now. They'll say, mommy, this was on TV and we had to change the channel because it was showing people that were, you know. So I think it's just that constant reminder every day of who we are in God. At the same time, I also believe it's good to enjoy life. Like Ella said earlier during the conversation that um, having joy and fun and sometimes when you are going through a dark time, it's so easy to be focused on what is going on around you and you have to tell people I've been waiting for this for a year or my life is so hard, but I think sometimes we forget to take time to enjoy ourselves to laugh and to praise and to enjoy God. I believe we're created in the image of God. So we like to laugh, we like to dance. So I like to think God has a sense of humor as well. Okay. Otherwise he won't have created us in that way. So it's just about being mindful what we feel ourselves with, but also taking time to look after ourselves, look after our bodies, to rest and to have fun as well. Amazing, thank you so much. You've touched on a lot of things there, thank you. What are your thoughts, Ella? I think um, Sister Shingi has said it all, and um, by the way, we might just be inviting her to join the choir. <laughs> letting, that, letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> um, but yes, it's um, exactly what, um, uh, what Shingi has said. We have to be mindful of what we are listening to, 
um, every morning I, I turn on the TV, I put it on the news channel, um, and I listen just to get an update of the news. Um, but then I have a general idea of what's going on, and then I just turn it off. What I tend not to do is to focus on the news all day, every day, all week, all month, because like Shingi said, a lot of it is negativity, and that's yeah. what news is. If it's not negative, then it's not news. It's not interesting. It's not, not, you know, it's just, I think it's just sometimes just the, the perverse human mind sometimes, how it works. If it's not bad news, then mm, it's not fun. It's not interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's good news, if you're telling us how somebody, how somebody was philanthropic and so how somebody was doing good things, you know, it gets boring after a while, you know, but then unfortunately that's, that's the way the world is. But in keeping our minds um, sane, focus on the word of God. Mm. When you, when there are things like, like Shinga said, that you belong to WhatsApp groups or platforms or, or, or social media platforms or groups that things just get thrown in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't focus on it because number one, you're not the only one who's on that group. Number two, you're not the only one who is in the world. So there's, you have to develop some kind of technique to ignoring these things, mm -hmm. especially the things that you see that are, are going to weigh you down. There's, there's, no way, there's no way that it's, it's, it's bringing glory to God. There's no way that it's, it's edifying. We go through these things and you see it. And a lot of times, some, some, of, them are, some of them are funny to look, are to look at or some of them are funny to see, but don't dwell on it. Let mm -hmm. it pass. If you have to listen to a, a, a certain kind of music or read the word, something to, to take your mind off it. it, it works. And do it immediately. Do it instantly. Don't wait because our mind is so imaginative. It's, our mind works. It works. It's like, it's like the speed of light, the way our mind works. So if, you, if something comes to your mind that is not of God and you know that mm, I don't need to be dwelling on this, get something to counter it immediately. Don't let it dwell. Don't let it dwell. Like the, like the, like the, like the men who were, who were building the, the Tower of Babel. Even God says, like, at this point, there's nothing that they imagine in, within their hearts that they will not achieve. Let's not keep it. The negative, negative news, negative thoughts, let's not keep it in. Because it will grow. Keep it in, it will grow. You start to imagine. And the, and the more you imagine, the worse the imagination gets. So you, we, we just have to feed our mind with things that are positive. Even if, you're, even if it's going to be something of, of comedy, you know, sitcom, situation comedies, feel, feel, just put, feel something in your mind that is not that negative, that negative thing that you have just seen that you have, because your mind is so important and you have to protect it. If you're going to achieve anything in this life, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, fight any battles, it's always one in the mind first before any other yeah. thing. So we need to be very careful the kind of things that we are allowed to, to, to settle because things will come into our minds but we need to be careful of what we allow to settle, to fester, and to grow in our minds. Awesome. We should, we should be careful what we allow to settle. Mm. I like the fact that you said we live in a world, so this news will come, but we, have, we, should, we should have strategies, mm. and that will help us stay away from these things, and I believe these are some of the strategies we are discussing. What are your thoughts, um, Pastor Halima? Wow. Um, I, for me, the beginning is first understanding who we are. We have to understand as Christians, um, I like what the ladies all mentioned. Mm -hmm. First uh, is you, maybe as the head of the family, the mother or the father. You have to understand who you are. And I cannot lead my children without first understanding who I am. I have to understand that I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and which God am I a child of? My God is a faithful God and he's also a righteous God. Mm -hmm. I'm created in his own image and likeness. So in me is the DNA of righteousness. Uh, I know we fall short of the glory of God and of the glory of righteousness. Like Sister Shinki said, some, sometimes, you know, along the ways of life, it's all there. It's all too much. And uh, we've got eyes, we've got noses, we've got ears. And they, with, like you mentioned about social media and everything, it's all bombarded onto our faces. And it's inevitable at some point that you will see it or you will hear it. But the most important thing is to be selective, like all the ladies said. Number one, I need to know who I am in Christ Jesus, who, am I, who am, I am as a child of God. Once I understand that, the same is the is, is the same 
um, information and storage and understanding is the one I transfer to my children. Now, as Christians, we, our children, we, we will not find difficulty as the world will find difficulty in raising our children. And I believe we will not find that difficulty if we first understand who we are. Sister Shingi mm -hmm. has explained it. That because she understands who she is, there was before and there is now. And the before was, if she was the mother, then see the grace of God. If her children were then, imagine what they would be now. That's right. you, do you understand the faithfulness mm -hmm. of God? If, if the children were then, and I don't mean then, in a, but I loved her expression. And sometimes these chats are very good, the mix of minds and understanding that, yes, mm -hmm. be out there and understand. And I always say, do not point a finger at that sister or that brother because of what they are doing right now or what they are going through right now. Because you have no idea what God has brought me from Sister Shinki is saying there was a time when, you know, uh, we, we all were, some of us went clubbing and nine o'clock in the morning is finding you in clubs. Like Pastor used to say, the break dancing. I love when Pastor says it. I'm laughing all the way. He says he used to do it on his head. And I'm thinking, on his head, he used to spin on his head. Okay, but look at him now and the children he's raising now. God is faithful. He didn't even allow them to be raised at that time. Now that he understands who he is, the children, he is culturing them in the same attitude and in the same atmosphere and in the same understanding. Irrespective and despite that, all these things are happening. The difference between the world and us Christians is that that grace is there. Who are we? We are children of God, of a righteous God, have that opportunity to be able to work our righteousness. It's a grace and it's given unto us. We are the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. We have to always remember this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If I consecrate it with all the goodness of God, the Holy Spirit will harbor into this body. The same I teach my children. And guess what? This social media and this negativity, this negativity is meant to break you and I, one way or the other. Come on. Why is it that the world is all about negative? Sister Ella said something, mm. you know, special. So why not? Anytime someone is talking about some good, it's considered boring. Yeah. Send them a message about your pastor preached about the creativity, the creative force of, of faith. Ha, ah, it's too much. The, mm -hmm. No, you know, I can't listen to all that. But the, from morning to evening, someone will be on YouTube, on WhatsApp, or on whatever, list, skipping all the preaching, but listening to all the ones that says, how, you know, all the distractions of the world. Do you see? Mm -hmm. This is the work of the enemy against who we are. Just understand that who we are is important. We are the Amazing. righteousness of God. Amazing. Thank you so much, Pastor. We have to know who we are. When we know who we are, it'll be easy for us to draw the yeah, boundary. Interesting discussion. Thank you so much, ladies, for being sincere, being honest, pouring out your heart to, to me about, about the creative force of faith, how important are our words. And yeah, it has been an awesome discussion. Thank you for taking the time to join me in the chat room it's been today. Awesome. And to our viewers, always remember that faith without works is dead. So if you don't like what you see, don't keep quiet. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Create what you want with your words and go to work. And the God we serve is so faithful that he will bring it to pass. Until we come your way again, stay safe and keep loving each other. God bless. Bye.